Welcome to Excel Magic Trick number 1492. Hey, in our last video, we talked about approximate match lookup using DAX. So this makes this part two, because in this video, we want to see how to do the approximate match lookup in a different way. We want to see how to use a foreign key in a relationship and how to use lookup value. Now, really, this should be called DAX magic trick because this is all about DAX. Oh, but wait a second. DAX is in Power Pivot, which is in Excel. These tricks will also work for DAX over in Power BI Desktop. Now, the inspiration for this video, if we go over to the sheet 1492 DAX, come from our YouTube teammates, Gert and RRR. We had a great discussion under Excel Magic Trick 1491 in the comment sections about approximate match lookup. Now, here's the situation. We have these Excel tables, and they're already in the data model. But if for every record in our fact table, we need to look up the correct discount rate for price, that means we have a lookup value of quantity as the formula copies down the column. We need to find the correct category in the first column and then jump over to the discount column and get the discount rate. The problem is when we're using DAX, we don't have a direct lookup function that can look up and do approximate match lookup. In Excel, of course, we'd simply use VLOOKUP. Look this up. It would race through, find the first one bigger, jump back, and know that that's the row. And VLOOKUP, because this is the second column, we'd tell VLOOKUP, get the item from the second column, and it would bring it back. Now, in our last video, we used a common formula for lookup when both the first column and the second column have values that are going from smallest to biggest. And the logic of the formula that we used in the last video is we looked up each one of the quantities. For example, 81. We looked it up in our formula, looked through this whole column, and asked the question, how many of you are less than or equal to 51? All of these got true. That filtered the table and the data model down to just these records. And then we used the max function on this column. And of course, if we're using these values from smallest to biggest and we ask for the max, well, of course, it will get 0.4 and bring it back to the row. Now, Gert and RRR said, what if we didn't have discount values that went from smallest to biggest? But what if one of our values down here was smaller than some of the earlier ones? Now, before we look at this example, let's go look at the data model and look at the formula we created last video. I'm going to go over to Power Pivot and click on Data Model. Or we can use the keyboard, Alt-A-D-M. Now, in our last video, we actually talked about exact match and approximate match. Exact match means you have something you can look up like the product name. And there's a relationship between this sales transaction fact table and the product table. In that case, you can use related. Our formula was this. We filtered the disk discount table and used the max function. Now I want to notice that right now it's returning 0.4. Alt tab to go back over to Excel. That formula works and is very common because for incentive structures like discount and commissions and taxes, the column that contains the value that we want to go and get something from is sorted from biggest to smallest or does follow this pattern. But let's change this to 0.34. Now our formula logic will not work for 81, because if these are all the values and we're asking which is the max amongst all of these, it will return 0.35. Alt-Tab to go back to the data model. I'm going to come up to Home, drop down for Refresh, and I'm going to select Refresh All. When we're done. Now this is not the correct discount for quantity 81. 35 is correct for the logic of our formula, Alt-Tab. But once we change how this column is structured, that formula will no longer work. So now in this video, we want to see two different methods 
to deal with a column with lookup values. We're still trying to do approximate match on this column, which has smallest to biggest values. But this column may not follow that logic. Alt-Tab. Now we're going to do two examples, and I'm going to use the lookup formula first. But guess what? For both solutions in this video, we're going to use almost exactly the same formula, except for we will not use max on the discount. We'll use max on the units. Alt-Tab. Notice right now, if we're looking up 81, the max would get 35. But if we switch from doing max on discount to max on units, then it's going to get the correct 50. Now, that 50 value can be used in two ways. We can put it into lookup value, which does exact match lookup. And actually, it will be a cool function because it's totally organized the opposite of VLOOKUP in Excel. But we'll see how to use lookup value. Or we can simply use that 50 as a foreign key in our sales transaction fact table and then build a relationship. Alt-Tab. So I'm going to come to the second column, double click, and I'm going to call it approx match 2. And we're first going to try and get the correct max units from that first column. Now, of course, if we try to use the max function on the DIS discount units, tab, close parentheses, and enter, well, it's obeying us. It's getting the max value from that column, which, of course, is the last one, 144. So we actually need to filter the disconnected discount table so max can only see the correct units from that first column. And the way we change the filter context for a function is by using the calculate. Calculate has an expression, which means some formula, comma. And now we need to change the filter context so max will see only the correct units from that first column. Well, guess what? We get to use the filter function. Filter is great because it will filter a table. First argument is table, so DIS. There it is, dis, discount, comma. And now the filter. That means one of the columns in that column we can filter. DIS, and I want to filter down arrow to units. Now we need to compare all of the numbers in the units column and the dis discount to just that quantity. So I say, how many of you are less than or equal to? And I'm just simply going to click. Now in Excel, of course, we'd have a cell reference. But here, it puts in the correct syntax, which is table name, and in square brackets, the field name. Now, because this is a calculated column and it will copy down each row, there's something called row context. When you have a calculated column and you refer to a column in the table, it will know to get just the one item from this row. Now, that's exactly how the Excel table feature works over in Excel also. Now, I close parentheses on filter. Filter is sitting in calculate. This whole filter will provide a valid list of rows in that table for Max to make its calculation on. Now I come to the end, close parentheses, and when I hit Enter, look at that. Now we have the lower limit for the correct category for each row. Now for this column here, we're going to use that whole formula as the lookup value inside the lookup value function. Now for those of you in Excel, lookup value tab, this function is completely backwards from the way VLOOKUP works. Now, Result column name. That actually is the column we want to go and get something from. Over in VLOOKUP, we would put column number two. Then it says search column name. That's like the first column for a VLOOKUP table. And look at that. The actual lookup value is the third argument, search value one. So result column name. I need to down arrow, and we're trying to get discount. That's the column we're trying to look something up from, tab. So the first column result column name, comma. Now the search column name. This is going to be that units column, as if we were putting the specific first column of a lookup table into our DAX formula. If you know how to use straight 
lookup, not VLOOKUP or HLOOKUP in Excel, straight lookup has an option where there's an actual lookup vector and result vector. So this is our lookup vector tab. And then very carefully, comma. Now, that whole calculate is the lookup value, which over here is called search value. And that will do it. Close parentheses. And when I hit Enter, there we get the correct discount. That 0.34 is the correct amount, not 0.35. So we change the logic of our formula. Max is looking at units. And then we use calculate max filter result as our lookup value. Now, watch this. I'm going to copy this whole calculate max filter control C escape. And now we're going to create, in essence, a foreign key column where we have the actual value to match. And then we'll build a relationship. So I'm going to call this something like lower limits units F key for foreign key. Now I come up to the formula bar, Control V to paste it. There it is. Enter. Now we have an exact match for each row in our sales table as a foreign key. You can see there's many 50s, right? So we can simply use this as the many side and our lookup column units as the one side. So with this as our foreign key, I go over to Diagram View. Now I can simply drag units over to lower limit units FK. And there it is. That's the many side. There's many 50s over here. Here's the relationship. Over here, there's exactly one of each one of those lower limits. Now we can come over to this side and use related, which is the VLOOKUP that looks through a relationship and finds a particular discount. So now we go over to Data View and our final column. I'm going to call this approximate match 03. Now we simply come up to the formula bar, related. And the only thing we need in related is the name of the column that contains the item we want to look up. And there it is, tab. Because there's a relationship, related will know to look up that 50, find the match, and go and get the discount and enter. And there we have two different methods to look up our correct discount when the discount column doesn't necessarily go from smallest to biggest. Now I'm curious, in the comments, you let me know which method you like best. All right, that was a lot of fun doing DAX approximate match lookup, either with a foreign key and a relationship or the lookup value. And so if you like that video, be sure to click that thumbs up, leave a comment, and sub, because there's always lots more fun to come from Excel is fun. All right, we'll see you next video.